<laughs> it's not my opening spew today, so I had that extra second to give my glasses a wipe to make there's nothing worse than looking at smudges on somebody's glasses give me one more second i was just cleaning my glasses in the meantime pop in say hi if you've never come into one of my lives before hi i'm cindy i explore the inside and the outside and here on sunday nights it is a casual night. It's a night usually we keep it pretty light. And, you know, it's just a really lovely energy. And once every two weeks, we do a show and tell. Uh, I work in a little thrift store. It's the job that puts the roof over my head. And it allows me to schedule my own life, create my own life. And I've been able and grateful that I work for a company that has worked with me so that it has allowed me to give my brand as much time as I'm able to do in that job. They know when my days off are done, I am all theirs 100 percent, and i'm actually very grateful that i have that job to ground in to remind me that i'm human you know to give me a space to show that i have value and right and again i have i work for an amazing company where that good cheer truly is needed and on the weekends like i said i give i give it all out yeah. But the weekend is over now. I'm back into my time. And in my time, it is devoted to my brand, but not just to my brand. It is devoted to me, right? In that creating the best human being that I possibly can be. One of the things I was trying to promise myself this week that I was going to try to be uh, more on time on things. So I, I was like challenging myself. I didn't realize how many things I'm actually um, not on time for. And it's not just, you know, coming in here a few minutes late or five minutes late. I've been in, in here 10 minutes late. Kathy has ha had to come and get me. I can't remember why she came to get, had to come and get me freaked me right out. I, I I was doing a live show and it was like the first time nobody had ever come into the chatters, right? Nobody was yapping. And I think I, I think I rolled with that live show for a half an hour or something. And finally, right, Kathy uh, messaged me and said, hey, Cindy, where are you? And I went, oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, bye ended my live show and it didn't matter nobody I didn't save it or anything because there wasn't any need to because I had accidentally checked it off as unlisted right so I was a doing a live show for nobody but I was glad that I had friends grateful that I have people here who care about me right that uh that uh they actually come and get me when I don't show up and I have never failed to not show up and that's the truth right and even though you know I do and it's not procrastination procrastination is just just that that you know you don't want to do something because you don't want to it's not that with me right with this show the show is everything my brand is everything to me so I get really hard on myself when I'm not here on time and when in the last five minutes or those extra 10 minutes or whatever it is, I'm scurrying around getting my drink ready and cleaning my desk off and right, putting on some lipstick, which I didn't even have time to do today. That's okay. My weekend is over now. It belongs to me and my brand. And we're starting this next set of days off and this next week off with my staff charges and getting things done. Oh my goodness. You know, 
For the past month or so, I have been guilting myself out. I have, I have a uh, uh, feeling like I really felt guilty and I really felt a lot of shame because I should know the direction, right? And I know the end game, but not necessarily all that in between. And it's all feeling and working through all that in between that somehow I got lost, right? And and I was beating myself up for not having goals and not having ambitions, not right, not going at it, especially when I had that found that shirt that said, This is my year. But there was something I did before last the last past month, because it's been about a month, maybe five, five or six weeks at the latest. But, you know, I'm trying to, right, I'm setting goals and I'm thinking, what do I want to do? I've got to love whatever I do. And, you know, this immediate moment and what I need to accomplish. And I'm not even thinking about it, right? Well, I was cleaning my desk up uh the past set of days off. I, I, right, I cleaned it all up. Oh, it feels so good. I was trying to make some room for my first staff charge, which is this table right here. You can see it a little bit, right? I'll just pull it down a little bit. You can see it, it has the folding, the folding flaps on it. I don't need anything big. It's just for me. And so the pieces that I want, and I know that's not everybody's flavor, but it's my flavor for what I'm looking for, just a small table that I could just maybe use in a lobby if I didn't have space for a dining table, because like right now I don't have use for it. But the piece came in, has great legs on it to really metal. It's it's a very retro, it's very the style, and it's in that cream white that I'm going for. And it just really looks good with this piece. I don't know if I showed you guys this piece. This is a piece I recently got a couple of weeks ago. Doesn't it go so well? So this is the style. This is, you know, that it's like 1950s, 60s, 70s style, but all in this rustic. Like it's, right, I'm not even going to repaint it or anything. I'm just going to wash everything down, and it's perfect for me. And I got another table like this, just a, just a little one, though. So they'll go, I don't know what I'll use them for, plants or They'll be part of my living room decor when I get my, right, my new place. But I'm thinking I have to get these things now, right? This table, you guys, it cost me $28. $28 for almost my dream piece. Because if you've been hanging out with me, you know the table that came in last year. That white malamine table of my dreams that was like brand new, but it was like from the 1950s and it had the steel chrome all around the sides and the legs and the, no rust on it at all. And it had the little drawer, right? And it had the chairs. And I snoozed and I lost, lost on that one, right? So I, I tried to push it for a sale so I could get a deal on it. So, so this has been the nicest table since, um, since, since then. So about a year, I keep my eye open and I checked it out. I really like the sides that I can keep them down. So it doesn't feel like a big piece of furniture in my house. So yeah, I know it looks like another piece of furniture in the house, but it really, in the end, I think it's going to look very minimal, especially in the color tones that I'm going, because it'll be my art, right? It'll be my books that will be the color and my crystals. And I sold you guys, look at it. All the earthenware is gone. It's so gone. I am so happy. It was cluttering my life. And when it cluttered my life, uh, it cluttered, right? It just, it was irritating. It was irritant. And I, I, I kept buying those pieces, <laughs> kept buying those pieces. So, so anyway, I lost track on what I was, I was saying there, but we do have a show and tell tonight. And uh, I don't have much because 
a big part of my investment was this dining table, which cost me $28. I spent $100, but about $20 of that was just items for one of the other girls that I that I work with, right? She's been she's been a little bit sneaky, right? You know, not paying her staff charges and stuff when she's supposed to. And she got caught and and you know, fair is fair. And and so I said, I'll buy them for you. And she wouldn't let me buy them for her. And I had it all filled out and everything. So I just took a few dollars of items that I thought she might like out of those staff charges. And she went and she put everything else, everything else away because you have to pay it on payday and she couldn't pay it on payday, right? So it was fair. Uh, but she got some of the favorite things and I treated her to those because, you know, we all have those things that calm our nerves, you know, and that was my friend Lorraine. You've met her before, right? Nine members of her family passed away and she's going through another run right now, almost exactly a year later. And she's going through another run of it. And one of those things that help her cope through it is, she, right? She likes to play the VLTs. I get it. I've been there, but I also know uh, what kind of trouble you can get into when when you're trying to calm your system that way. I'm so grateful that I'm not calming my system that way. Actually, there really isn't too much to calm down these days. So, so I am grateful for that too. Okay, you guys, let's say some quick hellos before we all start. Andrew, William, Kathy... See, we're come down here. Sorry, I took so long in popping into the comments there. I was kind of on a little flow. Oh my goodness, I cleaned my desk, but I have two mouses. I have one for my one for my PC, and then I have a wireless one for my. It's not even the right one. <laughs> you guys, I'm just useless today. Okay, well, I guess I'll just come down in the comments this way. Will it let me? Okay. Okay. So Andrew, William, Owen, Kathy. Hope everybody's having having a great week. Or I know it's probably going into the beginning of your work week, but it's going into well, it's going into that time that doesn't put the roof over my head. And that that feels really good. That's the one thing about having that time. For myself because I'm only answering to myself and tomorrow I got chores it's it's a uh, passport day so I have to get my passport done tomorrow and I have I have some mail to get rid of and um, and uh, yeah other than that it'll be getting the, the laundry done getting the house put back together after that big tear down that I did on this past set of days off, but I feel very good. I didn't make any space. The whole point was to make some space for this table that was coming. And I did make some space, but I put my office shelf behind my desk, which there was just enough room, had to pull the file cabinet out. So that took up the space that the office piece took. But then I looked at it and I says, oh my goodness, wash those out, Cindy. You got true drawers there. You got a drawer for your summer socks and you got a great big drawer for your, your winter socks. And so switching them out are going to be really easy, top and bottom. So it took the space, but I needed that space because right now I got a great big rubber make container holding all my socks. And I have to dig through because I like to match my socks to whatever outfit that I'm wearing, right? But the table's here. I have a shelf over here. I'm going to be doing some shuffling around, cleaning up. It feels good to clean, to get those donation bags ready, spend some time with my cat, who's happy that this part of the area is all cleared again so she can lay there and kind of feel like she's with me, but she doesn't realize probably no more than a month that air conditioner is going to be sitting right there. I managed to make the space for my air conditioner 
which needs to go right here because I like to turn it around towards me and the desk when I'm at, when I'm awake. And then when I go to bed, I turn it around. <laughs> I don't like the heat. I don't like the heat, you guys. I'm trying to plan a trip. I'm trying to plan a trip to um, Arizona and Utah. But I want to do it in September. I, I, I can't wait until next April to go. And that's the only time that seems reasonable to go on a trip like that because it's so hot there. Like, it's so hot there. But it's like fall. It's really cool in, like, April and May, right, before it stops, starts April, May, June, right? I don't know. Maybe I can figure out a trip to Arizona somehow, but it hasn't come across my path. But that opportunity arises. I'm going to jump all over it. Okay. Oh, Nancy made it in tonight. Aw. <laughs> ah, thank you, Nancy, for taking care of that. Sorry, Michael. Uh, welcome to the crew if you've never hung out on one of my lives before. Uh, but yeah, this crew here doesn't do the potty mouth. <laughs> like every, every once in a while, something flies. If we know your heart, it's all good. But yeah, I tell you've been in the conversation for a little while. <laughs> you try and use those, you try and use those, those foul language. They'll all be all over you and they'll, they'll delete the message just to give you that heads up. So don't be offended or anything. It's just kind of, right? And maybe this is what we should talk about for just a couple of minutes because it is show and tell night, you guys. It's show and tell. Aw, oh, Nancy, cheer up. You got your dolls already. Don't fall into that trap. Don't, don't fall, don't fall into that trap, Nancy. Keep upbeat. This is a big one that you've got to deal with. But it's two months, two months. Kick it up, Nancy. You got it. You got this. No problem. In two months, you'll have all your dolls back. You have some clothes. You might have some new dolls, right? But that furniture, are there any charities, Nancy, in Seattle, if you told them your situation, that there might be some kind of grant that they could deliver some Salvation Army furniture or something for you because of what happened? Let us know. I'm not sure if that would be possible. I know with our, we're a register, registered charity, but the money and funds that we get, it goes to providing jobs for people who really need the jobs, right? But there must be organizations. I mean, they do it for people when they move into the country, right? When they, they newly move into the country, maybe you need to talk to those people. Get into that community. Find out who's helping who. Because they're usually in the churches. Right, Nancy? Yeah. I have those ladies. They come into the store all the time. And they buy things for the, the, the Ukrainian families that come here. And the families from the other countries. It helps them to settle in. So they don't have to worry about some of those expenses. I didn't get you the Snake Mountain, William. William, I hope you don't think that I mailed that to you. That got sold. I took a picture of it to show you. I couldn't send anything that big. Oh, William, don't be disappointed, dear, because I did not mail that to you. I said in the messages when I messaged you, that I couldn't mail it to you because it was too big. Read your messages. Oh, William, I hope I dis didn't disappoint you there. But no, I didn't mail that Snake Mountain to you, dear. Snake 
sanctuary city. Is that what they call the the cities that take the the new settlers? Oh, thank you for understanding, William. But as soon as something shows up smaller, but that thing was like this big. It was it was huge. And it didn't have all the parts either, William. But yeah, somebody bought it. We I think we sold it for nine dollars. I put a nine dollar price tag on it and we sold it. It was just too big. But something comes in, William, right? I'm keeping my eye open. I know what you guys know what you guys like. I had another one of those coloring books that one of those ladies, Nat, or Kathy, likes to. It was the white book hardcover, and another one of them came in, but half the pictures were all colored, right? But there were still lots of pictures in it, but like half of them were colored. So I, I just. I just tore those tore those ones out and I put a dollar fifty on it. So I thought, well, right? Kathy liked the box, so there must be value in it. Right? I'm sure somebody's gonna notice that it's skinny, but yeah. Oh, they don't make them anymore. Well, thanks for letting me know, William. And now that it kind of broke your heart, even if it was unintentional, and even though you forgave me, like the sweetheart that you are, William, right? I will keep my eye open for you. And I will find some little action figure or something. And when I do, I'll make sure that I buy it and I send it off to you, okay? Yeah, for sure. You know I will. I don't think I've sent William a package, have I? And I'm coming to think of it. Yeah. And he wouldn't have gotten any of my canes that I made because uh, he doesn't have that, that need for the cane. And it seems to me that William is probably pretty tall. When you look at his pictures, right? You see the torso. He looks like he's a pretty tall guy you guys we have show and tell tonight we've been yibber yabbering it's eight o'clock now it's time to get started hopefully you like what i got again i'm getting ready for spring so there's going to be some summer clothes there for me but i'll be making a huge 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 donation of clothes anything that i did not wear this year and that I won't wear this summer, it will be packed up and it will be given to charity, right? So I'm not, I'm not a hoarder. You could tell I just got rid of, right? It was, I think, 80 pieces. If you count the lids and everything, maybe even 90 pieces of, of pottery I got rid of that I've been collecting for, for years and years now. And I didn't know what to do with it, right? And I got $300 for it, and it is gone. I'm so happy. But you can see that I got my crystals up there, and I got my light fixtures. I got all my, yeah, I got all my crystals, and I think I got a couple of, oh, I think I got a few dragons out there. This whole area is going to be redone. But at the same time, those possibilities and opportunity to find somewhere else to live. You know, I live in a building that has a lot of honorable. And because, you know, no matter what, I cannot end my life. I'm nowhere as near close to end my life. I can't end my life in the same place where my father, right? My father was in government housing at the end of his, his life. He, when he, my dad was a hard worker, but his heart disease got the best of him. And there was never any insurance for my father because uh, um, my father wasn't eligible because his was a, a lifelong grounded 
ailment that wasn't illegible. So it made him made it so he couldn't get those jobs that he he wanted. And I'm just thinking about it now, just thinking about it now that I remember my father telling me that it was his dream to be a police officer. And he didn't pass the test to be a police officer because he was one inch too short in those days. Nowadays, that would be called discrimination. But in those days, there were height um, uh, rules. And one of them, right, was, was his height. But you know what? My dad's health would not have allowed him to have uh, had that job. So it's really neat because I had never thought of that before, right? That my dad told me it was his dream to be a police officer, but he, he lost his dream of being a police officer because he was one inch too short. When in reality, it didn't matter if he was one inch too short or if he was two inches above the needed height. He still would not have been put on to the police force because of his congenital heart disease, right? And his risk for, for stroke. And my father, right, and mom were uh, in low-income government housing in the end, right? Because there was nothing to fall back on. And my mother had 12 different rheumatoid arthritis and she supported the family and that must have been very, very hard for her. I mean, me and my other sister, two of our sisters were out of the home by then already. Uh, but there were still two of the girls still still at home. And, you know, uh, it, it makes sense that right after my father died, they pensioned my mother off too because her arthritis was, was too far gone. And the only reason she kept that job was for my dad, right? It's the only reason that she stayed at that job. She should have probably been uh, pensioned off long before that. Uh, and we all, I was also saying she had a very, very good pension. She was a hard worker all her life. And when she retired, she didn't have any worries. She could live and do what she wanted. She had enough She had enough funds to be able to do whatever she she wanted, right? Okay, you guys, we are yibber-yabbering in. The only thing that drew me back to the intention was this cat in her box. Are you done yet? Oh. Okay, you guys, where do we want to start? Let's start in this bag. First thing I got, it was $2.50. was a fanny pack for my walks, you guys, right? I can put my phone and my camera and my money and, right, anything I need. There's even a loop there. I can loop my tripod on the side of me. Oh, that would be good, right, so that I don't have to carry the tripod. Every time I put the tripod in my backpack, I go through branches and I end up tearing my phone clip for the phone, right? So, so yeah, this is much better. I'll hold the tripod on my waist. It's a really good brand. It's Mountain account, uh, Equipment. It's the same company with my, with my bag, my purse. And it's my second item. When you find something you really like, you stick with it. When this bag is done, and it's probably got one more year on it, barely. Physically, it's good, but they get dirty after a while. And you can throw them in the washing machine. They don't clean well like they're supposed to. And and uh, you have to replace them every once in a while. But they are a great, great bag. So, yeah, I got a, a fanny pack. Those are the ones that go around your waist. It even has a, a, a cup holder. <laughs> and you guys know I love my, my coffee. Today I'm not drinking coffee. I'm drinking hot chocolate tonight. I'm trying to be creative in the fluids that I put in my system. I need to bring in more uh, hydration into my system. Um, and I know I'm doing a little bit better because I'm not having the Charlie horses, right? 
when I don't have Charlie horses, I know I'm getting enough fluids, but, but I can do better. We can all do better. You guys. Okay. William saying, I know about that having uh, a lot of clothes and just too much stuff in your house because I've been there, Cindy. Yeah, it's all it's all got to go. If I'm not wearing it, it's all got to go. I, I'm not emotionally attached to anything, right? Right? Grab my cat and off I go. I don't care. Start all over again. <laughs> it wouldn't take me long. Because I've recycled my entire home. You guys know that, you know, I came within 24 hours of homeless. But I don't know if I told you guys, but I lost a lot of my stuff in that apartment. I was in that apartment, well, since I separated from my husband. So almost 20 years I was in that apartment, right? And uh, I left everything all. I didn't leave everything. I brought the bed. I got my, I got my, oh, I didn't get my desk. This is a different desk. I got at my work. I didn't bring too much besides my few necessities. And whatever else I had, I slowly dispersed and redonated and gave to family or, right, whoever. I, I leave things in the laundry too, room too because I know people in this building can use these things. So, when we can't sell the shampoo and stuff when it comes into work. So I'll bring it home because they put it in the back room for the staff. They staff can have all those toiletries and stuff and whatever their staff doesn't take, I'll just throw it in a bag and I'll go put it on the laundry room table. And there's a lot of honorable here that could use a good bottle of shampoo. That's not a lie. <laughs> okay. Um, Nancy says, I understand the immigrants need help too, but they need to help them in a different way. First, they need to be here legally. I always say it's a, uh, it's a process. And, and for me, I say, you know, however you can get here. You know, I have my friend, his, he's from Nigeria. His name's, his name's Joel. He's an entrepreneur. He's always coming up with these ideas on starting businesses. And, you know, he's really trying to better himself. He joined he joined the military because the military was putting him through university, right? And, and I don't know how that went because from what I heard next, being an entrepreneur, you do that lot. You go jump from one thing to another. Uh, he was he was doing sales, right? And... I would do anything to be able to find a way that, you know, I could sponsor him to come into Canada. But he doesn't know anybody in Canada. There's, right, he has to do that paperwork. He has to show that he's a good, going to be a good citizen. And, right, and, you know, however Joel could get to Canada, if he could get here legally or unlegally, I'm not partial to that. Right, right. How many times have have people moved from one place to another and called it called it home or called it a country or called it a conqueror? Uh a conqueror, right, right, a conqueror, right? Genghis Khan and the, the Romans or the Vikings, right? I know it's different, Nancy, but you know. It's, it's, I don't know, maybe it's because I think that this is, should be an open world and where anybody should want to be able to go, they should just be able to go. And the bureaucracy, bureaucracy of, of uh, passports, I'm going to spend $200 tomorrow on my, on my passport. Um, the last passport I got was only a five-year passport. It was my First time I got a pa got a passport and I thought I was going to go through the process and I thought, well, I'm going to be rich a few a few years down the road. I'm not going to need 
I'm not going to need to worry about a five-year uh, five passport. I'll get a 10-year passport next time, right? And COVID started, and I only got to use that passport once when I went to go see Evan Carmichael in, uh, in Minneapolis for, for a workshop. And it was only a one-night a one night work, uh, workshop, but it was a package deal. It was getting on the road. It was the planning of it. It was the ex excitement of going to do something that I was interested in and going to meet something and someone that I thought was very interesting and in line with my values. So going back into the conversation when we said to the, you know, Michael, when he came in and he had use the F word. And I said, oh my goodness, don't be doing that in the air because you'll be shut down, right? But no offense because we I know some very smart, wonderful, kind people who have the worst potty mouths ever where every word is F and this and right, and, right? But it's the way they were brought up. And even though sometimes that, right, we can't always control those moment spurts where we let one fly. Even once in a while, I let one fly. I surprise myself when I do, but I let one, I let one fly. But I wonder if I let one fly. If you guys, you guys, if you ever hear me swear, just as a joke, just as a little bit of a ha ha. Because every once in a while, one does slip out of my mouth. There's usually nothing major, right? I think the worst of it would be the S-H-I-T word, right? Shut me down, right? Delete the comment. <laughs> oh, you couldn't because it's something I said. But bring it to my attention. That would be funny. Um, Nancy says uh, she only has what's on her back for clothes. I don't have any clothes until next month when I can go to Target in and out of funds for new things. What size do you wear, Nancy? What size do you wear? Do, would you trust me to send you, you know, what do you wear? What, right? Like, if you show me some pictures of some outfits that you wear, uh, I could go into your YouTube channel and look at a few of your videos to see what you're wearing and pick out a few things, right? But I'll be picking them as, as right as those funds flow in because I'm trying to get my teeth done. I'm trying to get my teeth done, but I'm helping out the best that I can, right? Right? And you need some help. You need some help, Nancy. So... So I'm keeping my eyes open for those outfits, for when those dolls come out of those bags, right? And uh, no, I said I was going to put you a package together, Nancy. So, you know, it's better that I do it because I work in a thrift store. It's cheap already. And not only on top of that, I get a little staff discount. Right, I get a little staff desk down. So it won't cost me very much to get you a few outfits, right? What about a nightgown? Do you have something to sleep in or a house coat or, right? Maybe I wouldn't get you a house coat because house coats are heavy. We want to keep the package as small as we can and get as many outfits in there for you and your dolls as we, as we can, right? But it won't be for a few weeks in any case, maybe a month. We'll just start putting things together and getting it ready, right? Okay, you guys, back to the show and tell. Let's get to this. This, one of my customers says, it doesn't go like that, Cindy. It goes like that. And I looked at it and, oh, you're right. It's a candle holder. But I don't want to use it for a candle holder. I'm going to put one of my big crystals on it. Won't it look nice sitting somewhere with one of my big crystals sitting on it? So so I bought it. This cost me uh, $3. So it was a little pricey, but it's very good quality. It's very good quality, and it's going to look really nice once I have a crystal on it. Um, where do I want to start putting this stuff? I'll just put it right there for that. Okay, next. 
We're getting ready for summer, you guys. So I'm not going to show you any more of these beautiful winter socks that I get. But I will show you my new summer socks. <laughs> little pink ones for a pink outfit. Little summer socks, right? So I've got a pair of summer socks. Oh, I love this, you guys. It's amazing. I don't know where. It looked good, actually. Oh, yeah, wouldn't it? Let me know if you think it would look amazing right here. Right here, I think it looked amazing. Take a look at it, people. Oh, not with that. It's like a little birdcage picture, right? It's just a birdcage. But it's in that rustic, you know, worn out feel that I'm going for in my living room. And I think, so it goes, it goes this way. So this is the front of it, right? It's got, it's like a little bird cage. So I thought that would look nice hanging from the, hanging from the wall. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it'll look nice in that sha shabby chic. I'm doing so well. I'm calling it Marilyn Monroe chic, but in actuality, it is a shabby chic. I am a work in progress. And in that moment, I was into the Marilyn Monroe thing, right? But it is in the in the style that I really, really like, that I think that I will continue to be able to like throughout my retirement. So this quite might possibly, as I'm decorating, this might be my, right, my furniture for the rest of my life. Okay, you guys, you know what this is for. It's my new scratcher because we're going to Arizona this year, you guys. And we're going to get some topaz. Oh. And we're going to get some uh, um, Herkimer diamonds. Herkimer diamonds? No, not Herkimer diamonds. Oh, we're going to get some some opalized opalized wood that is um um petrified petrified wood but it's billions of years old it's not like millions of years old it's billions of years old and it's and it's and it's crystallized like that you can look through these pieces of wood and when i say pieces of wood we're talking pieces of the trunk and they're beautiful. And we're going to go and... Right? So I'm getting my tools ready for my trip. Getting my trip ready. Oh, just to let you guys in on the deal. I'll maybe try and take a picture of it. And I'll post it to my to my community page. I'll We have a big picture window in the front of our store. And... Uh, I, I made a couple of bids on a couple of items that were in the window. They put uh, an inflatable kayak, really good quality kayak. I looked at the prices. They usually go for about $280 to $300 online. And uh, um, it's really nice. And it's just for me, right? And I thought while well, I'm on the road with the truck, it's something that will fold up and be able to sit possibly in one of the Rubbermaid containers, right, that I have. So I put a bid on it for $87.25. So I thought that was a fair, a fair price. Because the government is giving us uh, um, a little bit of money. Low incomes quarterly. Uh, the government sends, sends us, it's not much, but $100 will put groceries in your cupboard, won't it? And I'm using that money to hopefully win a kayak or, or end. <laughs> Because I bid on an eight-man pop-up tent. The eight-man pop-up tent goes for almost five hundred dollars. Um, I don't know if I can get it for eighty-seven dollars, 
but I put a bid in it for $87 for my eight man pop in tent. If I don't get that tent, it's okay. The reason that it's okay is because I have the same tent a six man <laughs> but i'll sell my six man tent for two hundred dollars if i win the eight man for eighty seven dollars right and i'll use the eight the 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 eight man pop-up tent for my camping tent right oh you're so right kathy that would Look nice in somebody's garden rotting away, getting all rusty. I bet you the birds would use it. You could probably put one of those little parakeet dishes, hook it on there because, right, you could hook it on there with little bird seeds, but I guess the squirrels and the chipmunks would steal it. Okay, you guys. Oh, let's start off, I guess, here. We got a few books here that you guys know I pick up books on payday. So the first book is The Couch of Willingness. An alcoholic therapist battles the bottle and a broken recovery system. I want to work in addictions and the recovery, right? So I understand Addictions, it all comes as a coping mechanism for a lot of that poop we have to mugmire through in our lives. And that's the truth. Everybody is, is uh, habitually attached to something. And you might not think it's an addiction just because, right, people don't know it as an addiction. Um, what's a good, what's in a good example of that? Well, what about people who clean houses that just compulse about cleaning all the time? It's a good habit for the people that you live with because they don't have to do housework. So they're certainly not going to complain that you keep the house nice and spotless, right? But it becomes compulsive and it becomes an addiction and when it becomes an addiction, it affects you emotionally. So now you're cleaning house like a frantic person, but also you're watching the people who are in your house, right? And that person who appreciated a nice clean house is now going to get cranked up for putting the feet on the couch or leaving their dirty socks in the hallway, and right? And so that venom... And that um, festering kind of gets passed on to other people like a little virus, right? Because you never know that person who appreciated a nice clean thing, house and everything. Now it's all of a sudden they're getting nagged at, right? So what happens, right? That poop just goes down the hill until there's nobody else for it, for it uh, to hold that that emotion so so yeah i i get it right i do get it and i do want to understand it but i don't well i can't say i don't understand alcoholism because i had a grandfather who was a very very bad alcoholic very mean 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 he was so mean when he was drunk he said the worst things to my dad broke my dad's broke my dad's heart every day like my dad, my dad took it and my dad still took care of him, right? He was the good son, just like I was the good daughter, right? But, um, but that addiction did get a hold. But I do understand alcohol problems because I had a friend who passed away, right? From the sadness of not being able to beat something that on occasion he had been able to for a time, let go of. And then also from working in the bar for all those years, right? I had lots of friends who who drank lots. I had lots of friends. I I understand alcoholism. I don't I don't necessarily have to be an alcoholic myself. 
because I lived it in a different experience. And sometimes the help that you can give people is to let them know, let them really feel and understand how it affects other people. Because like I said, you know, you that somebody's drunk in the way my grandfather treated my father, my father could have treated my grandfather when he got older, right? Right? Just the way he got treated. But my father was not that type of type of man and he took care of my grandfather right to the end but in that bitterness right he could have passed it down and my father never did that yeah so that was the first first book the second book I got is don't sweat the small stuff right it's kind of like what I say all the time don't cry over spilt milk if there's nothing you can do about it let it go right? Don't beat yourself up for something in the past that you can't fix. If there's something you think you can do and you want to go do something, by all means, yes, right? But I think we beat ourselves up for a lot of things that are in the past that you can't do anything about it, can't do anything about it now. And sometimes you can do something about it, but because of the experiences you had in your life, it makes it really, really, really hard to do something about it. So again, right? We look for those things that keep us comfortable. So don't sweat the small stuff for women. Simple and practical ways to what matters most and find time for yourself. Christine Carlson. This book was by Michael Pond and Maureen Palmer. And then the third one I got here is In Search of Friends. In Search of Friends, you know, being highly sensitive, right? Being uh, empathic, being introverted, even being codependent. Because if you're codependent, you're probably codependent on somebody who's very uh sensitive and very um introverted also right so we find it to be very very hard to make friends again i'm gonna have to say grateful for my experience in working in bars and nightclubs that forced me to learn to be social and then actually to recognize that it wasn't painful as it sometimes was in an earlier time in the past but remember what i said sometimes right because of our past we let it stop us right for making those necessary changes in our lives right that movement yeah so i want to better understand how to make friends right i have friends but my friend group is very 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 small right and i hate to say and I am grateful to say that my friends jump hoops right it is in our hypervigilance that we watch out for ourselves and you know we can't apologize for our values right and if our values don't mesh properly it doesn't mean that right it just means that we're not going to hang out together right just like potty mouth earlier in our live show right it doesn't fit with the values of this brand and especially in this chatter's life where everybody gets to have a say right but we we and it, and it's not like necessarily we're looking to keep it positive either because we're here for each other right and we're all struggling right we're all in the same storm and i would hate to think that anybody here that is in a really bad place in a bad storm like Nancy has been in the past. It hasn't been that long, has it, Nancy? They they were on it right away from like from when it when she got the word. Because I never heard anything unless you were dealing with it on your own before that. But I would have to say for, it couldn't have been more than a month from the point where, right, she was doing her live shows and doing her trains and the next thing you know and her dolls and the next thing you know, she shut down in an empty house with no clothes. I don't mean to laugh, but it just seems so ridiculous, doesn't it? 
right? So we don't say that this, this live show has to stay positive because how do we know anything's wrong, right? Unless somebody says something, right? So I'm grateful that people are comfortable enough when they hang out with us, when they hang out with this live show, right? That they know they can come in and if they have a problem that they can just come in and they can just spew it and we'll envelop it. There's no judgment there. How many times have I looked silly? I've bawled my eyes out. I've yapped non-coherently, right? But eventually, right, through that support of the people that we hang out with, right? Yeah, and I'm grateful for the people that I hang out with. So those are the three books that I got. Um, I got this. Those books are 75 cents. Paper, paperbacks at my work are 75 cents. Uh, this was 75 cents. They're just new liners for my stove uh, because I, right, we live in a, in a, um, a 55 plus building. Our metal, our smoke detectors are like top of the line. And right, you smoke a cigarette in your apartment. Those things are going to go, <laughs> right? You, you make a piece of toast. Those things are, those things are going to go off. So you have to keep things really clean. And so that, like, if the food comes in there, like, it's not burning away that we're able to switch them out and keep them clean, right? Okay, you guys, next. Oh, I thought these were really nice. They're fine art, fine art pencils. They're, like, fine art pencils, like charcoal pencils. And uh, these were 75 cents. And I have my artist book there, my pencil crayons and my markers. And now I've got my charcoals and it's got a little, it's got a little uh, sharpener. It's got a little pencil, pencil sharpener in there. So I got that for my artwork. Oh, this was beautiful. I'm going to wear this if I ever do a TEDx, TEDx talk, you guys. If I do a TEDx talk, I don't know what the top is going to look like. But I can show you what the bottom will look like. Oh, my goodness. It's a maxi skirt. It's a full-length skirt. But I don't know. You can't really see it because it's black. But it's all pleated all along the bottom. And it's super high quality, the skirt. They cut the tag off, right? I'll never know what the brand is, but it's a beautiful skirt. So, yeah, with any top, that's going to look absolutely amazing. I do a lot of running, a lot of grunt work I do at my job, you know. Uh, I love sales. I love the customers. I make sure that anybody who walks that door, through that door, I'm making some kind of initial contact with them at some point during their visit. But right? I'm hauling in donations. I'm cleaning lunch, lunch rooms and bathrooms and sweeping floors, whatever needs to be done. That's my show, right? That's my show and I represent. Okay. I bought some more of those magnets. I bought some more of those magnets because, right? Remember my file cabinet? So I'm going to use this to put my important notes on it, it's it's right there. So it's not even hogging up any space, right? All nice and clean. This, you guys, is really, really pretty. It's a white Himalayan salt, a white one, and it's a light. So, and you guys know I've got, I've got little lights all over. I got a light up there, I got a I got a Himalayan salt down there. It's just a little one about the size of a coffee cup. And then I have I have my light bulb. Light bulb. <laughs> it's a lamp that's in the shape of a light bulb. It's really cool. <laughs> this only cost me $2 with my staff discount. So I thought that was pretty neat. Right? Yeah, I thought that was really neat, a new salt crystal lamp. I love this one. 
It's going to go up on my go up on my shelf. Oh, there's still stuff in there, you guys. I got a fridge. I got a fridge magnet, you guys. It says, good luck. Luck is when opportunity knocks and you answer. <laughs> right? Just waiting for the opportunity. Just waiting for the opportunity. And then, oh, that's just part of this. Is that just part of this bag? Oh, it's just a new one for for my stuff. Um, uh, my store keys and stuff to keep it in a bag. So if I'm wearing a nice outfit, the keys aren't going to rub my blouses. I ruin a lot, right? I think they're secondhand, so I'm, I'm not putting value in the clothes that I have. I'm not taking care of them like I could because they're almost like disposable to me because I got them so cheap, so inexpensively, right? So I thought if I... I thought if I got that, then maybe I'd put my, my keys. So this was a neat, little neat thing that I got here. Um, it's something for my camping trip, right? It is, it tells the temperature, it tells you the humidity in the air, and then, uh, how does it open? It opens up. How do you open? Maybe you just, oh, you just pull it. And then there's a compass inside. There's a magnifier glass in there. There's uh, the mirror so you can get the attention of the rescue planes. <laughs> right? I'm here. I'm, oh, look at it even works. I'm here. Come and get me. <laughs> right? Right, because I'm going to the Grand Canyon, you guys. I'm going to be in the Grand Canyon. People die in the Grand Canyon, you guys. Right? So so I am going to play it safe. But there's little holes here. So I don't know what those little holes are, are for. That's interesting. Oh, and there's something, something on the side here, too. Oh, and there's a measuring. This, yeah, it's just a little really neat neat thing that right that could actually go in my fanny pack when I go for my walks so that if I get lost maybe I can save myself I usually save myself anyway <laughs> okay that's one bag I have two more two more bags to go people Oh, we got another book here, you guys. Oh, I remember. I says, oh, I got to have that book. He says, I have to have that book. End of the world comes, right? I'm going to Black Lake and I'm going to, right, dig into the rock and make me a cave. Or I'm going to make me a tree house. <laughs> and inside are, are all the designs and specs in how to make how to make tree houses. So, so I thought that would be really fun to, to take a look at, right? Maybe make myself, my father used to do things like that. I remember he used to make us uh, tree houses all the time. He would, he would uh, make us igloos. Like, oh, he made the best igloos. Like as if he was up in, up in Taktoyaktak. He was making those igloos out in the front yard. And we lived right across the street from a school. And all the neighborhood kids, oh, they just loved the igloo. He even made like a hole in the top and we'd have a big fire in the center. And it was a big one too, fit the whole family, right? I think we even had a sleepover in the igloo, right? Yeah, so so yeah, I got a book on, I got a book on tree houses. That's a nice tree house, isn't it? What a great idea. Yeah, for a treehouse. That's amazing. So I got I got four books. So I spent I spent uh three dollars three dollars on books this payday. All my memory cards are absolutely oh my goodness, it's full of goodies. Let me spill it out. <laughs> Um, 
I have all my memory cards with all my explorers and adventures. I film everything. And, you know, when I first started, I didn't understand about Google and cloud. And I stored everything on hard drives, like everything, whether it was a memory stick or whether it was memory cards, SD cards or 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 physical hard drives. I have some of those and those are expensive. But I thought I needed a container because I'm finding these sticks everywhere. I bet you I can fill this whole tin, uh, tin up. And you know what? I do believe there's lots of lots of adventures there that you guys have not even seen yet. Because a lot of it I didn't post. Yeah, interesting. But I'm planning on going through all the video. Because I kind of want to do a kind of journey kind of documentary type in the in my story right i don't know if anybody be interested in but i thought i'd mix all those explorers and walking through the fields and mother nature and add it all in but add it in with you know my experiences and my and my thoughts and and the story of me so far and i thought well maybe can we make some time to do that? Can we get Cindy on a schedule? Oh, which is what I was saying about those. Oh, so anyway, I just I just took this. Like I said, the shampoo and stuff, when they come into the store, I usually grab it. And sometimes I keep it. Sometimes it goes down to the laundry room table. This is those hair conditioners that you get when you dye your hair. So they're the best conditioners. Like they're very high strength. So... Some people, they like to go to the beauty shop and they can afford $100 for a bottle of hair conditioner. I can't do that. But if you want a good hair conditioner, those tubes that come from the hair colors, they they work well. So there you go. I got my new tin for my right little Egyptian. It was a candy tin or something, right? But I, it's really pretty. And and that kind of suits the, the desk area. And then I got a pair of, of socks. Um, uh, shoelaces when the shoelaces come in and it's new in the box right you can't get enough shoelaces i'm always looking for good shoelaces okay so we killed another bag oh no we didn't here's some things i got a rose court crystal uh right i'm not fancy that it's on a chain i may save it i mean save the crystal by tearing the chain off i think i probably will um and then i'll i'll wash in some nice soapy water then i'll dry it then i'll put it up on top of my pc and i'll let it get all kinds of sun for a couple of days then i introduce them to the rest of the crystals right once they're all cleared out but it was such a nice piece of pink quartz this one is i think is that pink quartz no it's not no, it's just regular crystal crystal quartz, right? And it is shaped. It's not naturally shaped that way, but it's still a nice piece of quartz. And when they come into the store, and I pro she probably charged me $2 for it, right? Um, you guys know I like the stretchy bracelets. Whoops. The stretchy bracelet. So I got two stretchy bracelets. They were 50 cents each. So I got two stretchy, two stretchy bracelets. They're very lovely. Okay. And the last thing is a little, I don't know, a little pendant, a little pendant there. It was only 50 cents, but I thought it was really really pretty and I'm going to turn it turn it into a brooch right because I got all those brooch parts last payday so maybe even this one might end up on a brooch it probably will. all my stones you know how many stones I have I can make a lot of brooches you guys I can make a ton of brooches and my crystals are beautiful right yeah <laughs> they are they are beautiful. Okay, you guys. And I don't mean beautiful like they're beautiful, like the look beautiful. I'm saying they're beautiful just because 
right? They're just, they just put off such a great vibe. Okay, so let's throw all of this stuff in here and let's get into the last bag, you guys. Are we going to make it on time? Uh, you guys will give me an extra 10 minutes if we need an extra 10 minutes, I'm sure. I hope everybody's having an amazing week, you guys. Oh, is this candy? This is the candy box? I'm not sure. You said something about the brand. Derwent. Derwent. Oh, the pencils. They're a good brand. You like those kind of pencils too, Kathy? Yeah, I like them. I got them, I think, for 75 cents. Hope I got a good deal. I know we're going into spring, you guys. But without fail, and you guys know, I literally lost a glove practically every two weeks. All winter long. Uh, partly because it was so mild out, outside that I didn't always need my gloves. So I was always stuffing my gloves in my pockets. And sometimes you stuff over the things in your pockets and they pop out and stuff. So I lost quite a few gloves. So I picked up a couple of gloves uh, in the past couple of paydays. Um, I'm wearing one of the pair now. They're just really, I love them. I love them. Uh, but I want to make sure that I have good mitts for next year and I got these mitts really nice mitts I got them for two dollars I got them for two dollars and fifty cents really high look at there's leather right rubber rubber right tons of warmth padding on top and, oh, they feel fantastic. They feel absolutely probably one of the best pair of mitts I've gotten ever in that store. I'm going to try real hard not to lose these ones. Uh, I'm assuming they were pretty much brand new. Somebody may have tried them on and said they don't fit and donated them. But uh, these ones here will get put away. For next year. Happy to have them. I know I'm not supposed to be buying winter right now. Because it's summer coming up. But when something is absolutely just gorgeous. I got this cowl. And you guys, I'm in love. Like I'm a real sucker for the cowl next. I might even get one wear. I'm going to wear it next week sometime. It's supposed to be cold here in Winnipeg this week. It's been really, really warm all winter. Uh, it was the third warmest winter in in uh, in the last 150 years here in Canada since they've been keeping track of the weather. Uh, but um, uh, it was a leap year. So if it wasn't a leap year, uh, we would have made it to the second warmest, the warmest year. I think the, the warmest year was like, 1870 77 or something like that and it's almost they had then was not the same technology the same tracking as we have we have now right okay you guys oh i thought more books i got more books no i don't have more books for my trip to arizona i got myself a pair of shorts they're the, the khaki shorts, the ones that go to the knees. In my favorite color, you never come across them. In my size, I was, oh, it looks so good. One of my favorite colors, this color looks absolutely amazing on me. But I can't wear yellow, but yellow, but I can wear, I can wear mustard. Oh, you guys, these are so cool. These are worth a lot of money in actuality, but they were up out, out on the shelves. One of them is going to fit me. I'm going to wear it all summer. What I got here, take a look, the fabric. These are vintage 
Honolulu. They got tiki tikis and stuff on the sides. These are vintage Honolulu uh, mumus. Uh, Yui Make. These are from like the 1950s. This is my size, you guys. I'm so excited to wear this one. Right? Look at all the tiki, all the tikis on it. So cool. Just love it. This one I may keep, but I want to wear it a few times this summer to see if I love it. This one my sister is taking. Um, it's amazing. The fabric is. i never seen such crazy, amazing fabric. But this is also... Uh, look at the tag. Here it is. It is Hakalawo Fashion Honolulu uh, 1950s, 1960s at the very latest. Look at it. It's got palm trees it's got grass shacks it's got mountains and palm trees that fabric is so killer amazing so yeah my sisters my sister is taking and look at the cute little 19 i guess it's 1960s oops sorry this side see it's got a little a little bow on it on the front of it right here yeah so cute these things are worth a fortune and especially you know it's unfortunate about the fire but especially after the fire these are going to become uh very 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 collectible so yeah i grabbed that it was on the shelf i paid quite a bit for this this one you know for a thrifted dress but the fabric on it is right so so i paid 13 dollars for this and with a little staff uh staff discount i got it for 10 dollars. the other one was only seven dollars i love the other one just as much as i love i love the fabric but i'll be able to wear the brown one so i'm pretty excited uh, okay i got a carpet for my bathroom shower uh, I've been using a hallway carpet, right? Just because why fix what's not broke? I had an extra carpet. I was using it, but it wasn't a good carpet because it was it was getting wet, and when it got wet, it flattened out and looked dirty, and it it just didn't serve well. These ones I can just toss it in every laundry day with my laundry, right? Because it's just a fabric just a fabric rug and it's the kind of fabric that's going to grip the floor but right it's it's going to slide around because it doesn't have the rubber on the back which i don't want anyway right so i got a new a new carpet oh you guys you're gonna love this remember what i said when i came into the live you know my friend lorraine she couldn't she couldn't pay for her staff charges this payday I was able to pay for a few things so that, you know, she didn't feel so bad that she had some things to to take home. But I also had bought her a couple of things that were in my staff bucket. Like I found her a beautiful pair of slippers and the color she likes and a pair of pants. And so I put those off to the side for her. So she got to take these home. But because she had to put the bucket away, this was, this was something that uh, she had to give up. And so I said, guess what, Lorraine? I'm taking it, right? That's not going out onto the shelf. I can't believe she only paid $1.50 for this. With my staff discount, I got it for a dollar. Can you see it? Is it showing clearly? The blues and everything? It's a monarch butterfly and if you could take a look at the back it looks totally different look at the back of it <coughs> totally totally different i have no idea 
I feel bad that it's died and it's in there. But I have a friend who loves butterflies, who really loves the bugs and stuff. So when I see him, this will go to him as a gift. And it didn't cost me anything. It cost me a dollar. Mind you, I'd love to have the container for one of my crystals. My crystals would look nice in that container. But the container is keeping the butterfly, the butterfly safe. Right. So I'm taking I'm taking the butter. I took the butterfly and um, and when I see my friend and I'll see him, uh, I'll give that to him because I he really, really loves the bugs. Uh, you know, I'm looking for spring clothes. So I got a, I got and, you know, I like the bohemian style. So I, I couldn't say I couldn't say no. I couldn't. Oh, it makes me happy. It's so beautiful. Look at the color. It's just amazing. I just love it. it. Makes me happy. Like it makes me happy. And to the fact that I can say I scored, right? Because this top, if you bought this top, <coughs> it would have cost you $50. Guaranteed this top would have cost you $50, right? And and I got it with my staff discount. I got it for $2.90. Okay, we're almost done, you guys. Just a couple more things. Um, oh, yeah, tube skirts. I'm a big tube skirt girl. Uh, I always have been when I worked at the bar, right? Because the right guys are creeps sometimes. And I'd have to wear tight. And then I would wear like the pant tights and I'd wear the tights and then I'd wear a tube skirt over, right? Just to keep things covered and stuff. And I found this beautiful, beautiful tube skirt. And I love that it has little holes on the bottom. So yeah, that'll be my new work skirt because I wear tights at skirt all the time. So I'll change my top, wear the tights, and wear the wear the skirt. And then the last thing I got, oh, I'm going to have to wear this next week sometime. You guys, you know I love the hoodie shirts. Look at it. It's a hoodie shirt. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a sweater, you guys. It's a sweater. With the ties there, I absolutely love that. I'll be wearing that next week. And then that's the staff charges. With the dinette table, my whole bill came to $98. I paid $98. I paid a lot of money this payday. But like I said, when those pieces, when those pieces come in, I have to take advantage, right? Because... It fits my decor perfectly, and I might not have that opportunity. You never know what opportunities do come by. And I go, yes, and then the next thing you know, I live up in Takto Yaktak in an igloo. Okay, you guys, let's call it a night. I haven't even had supper tonight. I brought cream, and I bought fruit. I think I'm going to make some toast. And, I'm, oh, and I got my hot chocolate and I knew to put the lid on it so it's still hot. I'm going to take in some lessons and I'm going to call it a night. Tomorrow's another busy day. Oh, oh, before we go, can I tell you a funny story? Because I started to tell it when I, when I first came in and I was saying, you know, I was beating myself up and the guilt and the shame for, for not, um, uh, working on goals and working towards them and stuff. And I've been really, truly beating myself up, totally, totally forgetting. Remember when I came back from my trip in September, I made my goals. I made my goals for this year. And I've been beating myself up that I wasn't, I was thinking too far in the future. I was looking at those big goals going, how do I get there? When you got to start with your basics. 
And so I didn't, I didn't stop moving in my goals because I'm going to get my passport tomorrow. That was on my list of goals to get done this year. I'm getting my passport done tomorrow. The glasses were on my goal list for this year. My fiscal year starts in September. I've got my glasses already, right? I've done my glasses. I got my passport. I needed the wireless microphone that I still haven't used yet. I didn't need it. I wanted it, and I took advantage of an opportunity to get it as a birthday present. But in doing that, I was able to check it off my goal list. So I got my wireless microphone, and next week, I make my first appointment to get the dental started. That was on my, my list of getting things done. The other two things, my first paying client is going to happen this year, right? Right? I'm, I'm, I, I could do good. I know where my talents and where I can help. And uh, yeah, so if you want to be my first client, if you want that privilege <laughs> of saying, Cindy, can I be your first client? Right? <laughs> that would be amazing because you would always have that right. It would be a special deal. I'd say, oh, you get, you get, uh, you get, you get three months and then for the rest of your life. <laughs> It'd be like ticker tape parade. It'd be like what, being that lady in the grocery store who walks through the door and she's the millionth customer, right? And get something amazing. But I would have to say, me and Nancy, we do have some very, very amazing, I have amazing conversations with all of you and that's the truth but the two things after getting the teeth fixed oh well there's three things still I have to accomplish so the first one was the the microphone checked off the list the glasses checked off the list the dental that starts next week the passport I'm doing tomorrow my September holiday I have been working on that non-stop trying to do a little bit every single day it's one of my favorite things to do i don't give it a lot of time i don't delve in too too deep in this moment as we get closer i'll be doing more because i'll have to be booking the campsites and getting the campsites along the route i don't even know which route down pat yet i've got an idea which route i want to take to get down there because i want to cover as many states as i can that has opportunities for digging for crystals I'll be digging for crystals in Montana, right? We're going to be going for blueberry crystals, right? In uh, in Utah. It's going to be so much fun. And that's where the, the crystal forest is um, and where I'm going to get the... I'm not going to the crystal forest to get the opalized wood. I can't go there legally. I won't be able to get over the border. And you're not allowed to to uh, take the opal opal out of the, the national park, the crystal forest in the national park. But you can, right, you can dig for the opal out because that forest isn't just in the national forest or in the government uh, park. It's also on the outskirts and on farms and lots of the farmers open up their fields for people to dig in, right? And there are other mining opportunities uh so the holiday in september i've been working on it the sixth one will be more of an opportunity kind of deal right when i hear somebody comes to winnipeg i'm going to write in thought leadership somebody i admire that i would really like to see maybe they'll come to a city close to me where i can get a deal on a plane ticket Maybe it's just a one night workshop. I don't know. But that opportunity will come across my path. Whatever it is, is going to be very, very inexpensive. Because it has to be because the September trip is going to take every single penny. The vehicle is paid for for the trip already, you guys. Is that not crazy? The vehicle is already paid for for those holidays. And I've been beating myself up. Like it's it's incredible that I I I went 
a couple of months, now I'm saying a couple of months, six weeks maybe, that I've been beating myself up. Where do I go? What do I do? What's the big goal? In the meantime, I was on my goal. And I did, right, and I totally forgot that, but somehow in the back of my mind, I was still working on those things I needed to work on, right? So they must have imprinted on my mind somehow from writing it down. But I came across this yesterday and I looked at it and I went, oh my goodness, there's my goal. <laughs> Cindy, you're such a silly girl. You're such a silly girl. So I just wanted to tell you guys that, right, we're right on track. We're right on track. Everybody, have a great night. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow sometime if you come into What's My Good Cheer. If not, we'll see you next Sunday. I hope you like my show and tell. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.